Today on Fast Food Face Off, we're doing Panera versus Starbucks to see who has the best, healthiest breakfast options. Let's crush some calories. What is up, Tasty Vibe Tribe? Today, we have a couple of healthier breakfast options from both Panera and Starbucks but we're gonna do things a little bit differently in that we're gonna have like items stack up against one another to see which one of these companies reign supreme. Let's get into it. So first up, we have their kind of yogurt parfait type deals from both of these companies. So you have yogurt with mixed berries and then some sort of a granola. I'm gonna start with Panera and then I'll, uh, I'll give Starbucks a try. Hey, Tasty Vibe Tribe. Hopefully 2021 is treating you well. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. It looks like there's like toasted pepitas in there and then some nuts and then some dried fruit, which is great. I think that it'll add some interesting texture as opposed to just like a plain kind of just crunchy regular granola. Let's see how it tastes. The granola comes in a container on top, probably for the obvious reason of keeping it from getting uh, soggy. So I'll add that on top and you'll just forget that I completely spazzed out. All right, let's see how it tastes. It's like I thought, there's a nice textural element from the granola, more so than just regular plain granola. You get little pockets of nutty and, and kind of buttery and uh, little pockets of sweet and roasted. It's uh, it's a really well-balanced bite considering that it's fairly simple and that it's just yogurt berries and then a, a, a little bit of a, almost like a trail mix. So this isn't actually very far off from what I have for like my normal breakfast. I usually go with something like a Greek yogurt, mixed berries, and then I usually add protein powder just for a little extra flavor a little bit of added protein, and then I'll usually put some sort of a granola. You know, if you guys are curious as to like, you know, how I diet and, and exercise and stuff like that, uh, in future videos, we may do something where I kind of go through like a day in the life when I'm not doing these videos. If you guys are interested in that, just let me know down in the comment section. Next up is a Starbucks rendition. Let's see how it stacks up. Starbucks went a little bit more traditional. Again, just a Greek yogurt. I think theirs is non-fat, you know, if that makes a difference to you guys. Uh, some sort of like a mixed berry compote as opposed to like fresh mixed berries. And then just some traditional granola without kind of all the uh, extra added bells and whistles that Panera went with. Let's see how it tastes. I get what Starbucks did with this. This is definitely going to be one of those instances where your mileage may vary. This is sweet. I believe that the yogurt itself is sweet. The berries kind of sit in like a, like a syrup. So that's sweet. And then sweetened granola. What Panera did was they took unsweetened yogurt, fresh fruit, almost like a trail mix style granola that had nuts and seeds and dried fruit in it. For me and my preference, your mileage may vary on this. I do prefer uh, what Panera was doing, even without having to get through the rest of this. I enjoy being able to kind of taste my yogurt, getting that little bit of a tang and the acidity, and then kind of getting a balance in, in sweet and texture and freshness from the fresh fruit seeds and the granola that Panera has. This is more or less if you just kind of wanted a slightly healthier option to maybe like a donut or like a muffin, maybe go with this because at least there's some protein and uh, some fruit in there. 25 total sugar, so there's a lot of sugar in this. Um, not, not that there's anything wrong with that, but just know that there's probably gonna be less sugar here and more here. So the Panera yogurt actually had more grams of sugar in it, but they were from natural sources and there was some fiber in there to help break it up a little bit. So next up, we have kind of the egg dishes from both of these companies. So there's more than one flavor for either of these companies. I just went with something that I felt was something that I would like and that uh, I feel like would be popular. So you have sous vide egg bites from Starbucks with bacon and gouda. And then you have bacon cheddar spinach souffle. Guilty pleasure. Chocolate souffle. Chocolate souffle. From Panera. 
Now, the differences should be apparent in just looking at them, but this is more kind of like, like a quiche kind of thing where it's like a baked egg dish with a uh, crust. And then these are just kind of individual um, uh, puffed up egg bites. I'm, I'm not gonna get into the whole thing about like the difference between sous vide and all that. If you guys are interested, you can look it up. Enough of that, let's just get into it. I'm gonna try these egg bites first. Let's see how they taste. For those of you who are curious, sous vide is a cooking method where basically you vacuum seal your food and you cook it in a warm water bath for a longer time at a very precise temperature. That's really tasty. You get like smacked in the face immediately with the, the cheese, which I'm not even positive is Gouda. It might be cheddar. I might have been wrong. I'm not positive. Anyway, it's really good. You get a nice bacon flavor, a nice cheese flavor. The eggs almost kind of have like a, a polenta kind of vibe going on. If you guys have ever had that, like a thicker bite of egg, almost like a patty, but just a really good quality though. Like it's not like gritty or grainy at all. Really tasty. So Mrs. Fast Food Face Off has actually told me that this is Gruyere, not Gouda. Difference. It was the G that threw me. I get why um, Starbucks kept these pretty straightforward, which is bacon and cheese, because for most Americans, bacon, egg, and cheese, that speaks to us, right? I think that this might have benefited, especially from a place like Starbucks that tries to be a little bit more refined. I don't know, something like green onion or scallion or something to just kind of make it a little bit more something than just a, a essentially just, you know, a normal American breakfast in a bite. Unless, you know, that's what they were going for. So next up is Panera's um, souffle dish. Uh, I'm just gonna eat this with my hands uh, because that's probably how I would eat it anyway. You're probably more refined than I am and you would eat it with a knife and fork because you're not a barbarian. This is really nice. You get flaky layers of pastry and it's really buttery, almost like it was baked into a croissant. Bacon and then you have cheese and then you have like the balance of like the eggs with the veggies. And I feel like this just kind of comes off as a more complete breakfast than just those egg bites. I feel like this is almost indulgent. Like if you really wanted to treat yourself for breakfast, this would be a nice, you know, breakfast option to be able to kind of bypass the normal you know, donut or, or bagel uh, crowd that, that tends to be the nine to five breakfast crowd. I was trying to think of like what this reminds me of. It's not any specific food, but I feel like this would be like a perfect brunch item. God, I miss brunch. If you were to go to a restaurant and they have this on their menu for brunch, you'd be really happy with it. Still super tasty. This is a hard one because they were both so delicious. Like it's not like with the yogurt where there was like a standout. Again, I think this is just a, your mileage may vary. If you just want something straight to the point, I'd probably go with the sous vide egg bites because it's just a perfect bite of bacon, egg, and cheese. I would say you're more of a, a pastry person in the morning, whether or not it's sweet or savory, or you just like something that's a little bit more delicate as far as the flavors are concerned, I would go with um, the souffle from Panera. It's a really nice option. I think more people should know about this. Here we have both of these companies' coffee. I was supposed to get some form of an almond cream cold brew from both of them, but I didn't get it, I don't think, from Panera because I'm looking at the label and it says vanilla cream cold brew. It's supposed to be a Madagascar vanilla cream or vanilla almond cream cold brew. Uh, and then this was supposed to be a honey almond cream cold brew, which it is. I know that that all sounds confusing. I just wanted to let you guys know, one, so that you don't end up ordering the wrong thing, and two, know that it's gonna be not exactly a one-for-one -one comparison because one of these has almond milk and the other one doesn't. Enough of that. Let's just see how they taste. I'm gonna try Starbucks first. I mean, getting, you know, the typical cold brew flavor uh, of Starbucks coffee, which is good. You know, you get a smooth, strong, kind of robust coffee flavor. I'm just trying to see if I can pick up on any of the other flavors that are supposed to be in here. No, nothing really, if I'm being honest. I wouldn't even be able to tell you that there's almond milk in there. Definitely doesn't really have any honey flavor. It just tastes like a, a good cup of cold brew, which nothing wrong with that, but that's the case, I don't know if they charge me any more than they normally would have for their cold brew, but uh, this is a little disappointing. 
Yeah, and it's not even one of those deals where, you know, sometimes with coffee, everything kind of settles towards the bottom. I mean, I drank all that pretty fast. I swirled it around and and still, it was just um, just a good smooth cup of, uh, of cold brew. And next up we have the vanilla cream cold brew from Panera. I don't know how this is gonna taste because if I'm being honest, I've never actually had coffee from Panera. I know that they have like a new promotion with them about some sort of like a coffee club monthly membership deal. I just thought that that might be worth noting because um, you know, if you guys are coffee drinkers uh, and this ends up being good, then it might be worth getting that membership. See how it tastes. Yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not crazy about this. Starbucks cold brew is so good because it's just so smooth that when I have cold brews from other companies that are less smooth, it's like immediately apparent that it's, it's not Starbucks. Like I could have done this blindfolded and told you which was which. The vanilla flavor is nice. Uh, the coffee itself is still a pretty good cup of cold brew. It's just a lot more acidic than I, I enjoy. So again, your mileage may vary, but I do think that if I'm gonna have to nod one over the other, uh, my money's gonna go with Starbucks. I also don't need to finish this to know that it's not really you know my cup of coffee, pun intended. Next up, we have the oatmeal from these companies. Right off the bat, this looks like a larger portion from Panera and it's slightly different. So you have what looks like mixed berry, like strawberries, blueberries, there's pecans in there, and then I think that there's brown sugar and cinnamon as well. Here, there's blueberry, there's walnuts, what looks like sliced almonds, and then they also offer these little agave packets for sweeteners. They gave me two, I put one in there. If it looks like it needs a little bit more, I'll put the other one in there. Just something to note, this kind of comes pre-assembled like this, where Starbucks has the fruit and the nuts and like the agave syrup off to the side, and all you get is the container of oatmeal and you kind of mix how you want to mix it. Let's just see how they taste. Let's start with Panera. This smells amazing, by the way. I wish that you guys had smell of vision because with the brown sugar and the cinnamon and then uh, the baked oats, it's just, it, it smells that insane. I don't know about you guys, but when I get my oatmeal, I tend to like it with a little bit of texture in it. I like when you get a little bit more like a rustic kind of, not necessarily steel cut oat, but something that just has a little bit more texture. And in this case, it's got a lot of great texture. You have the fresh fruit, you have the texture from the nuts. The oatmeal itself is actually uh, holding up really well to everything that they have in there. I think that they also left the oatmeal itself plain so that it's not super sweet, but just sweet enough. You're getting that warming element from the cinnamon and the brown sugar, but yeah, this is uh, this is almost like comfort food for me. For those of you that have watched the videos and wondered exactly what it is that I'm eating, the menu items and their details are written down in the descriptions below. Next up, we have Starbucks oatmeal. I'm gonna stir this up and then uh, I'll let you guys know what I think. So one, I was definitely right. It definitely needed the second agave nectar because it would have probably not been uh, very sweet without it. And two, I do like the idea of what Starbucks was going for here. The sliced almonds is really nice. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an almond fan. And the pops of fresh blueberry and the blueberries that they used in here as well were like peak freshness too. So they're like really good. This is just a really plain offering. I would say that this is more targeted towards people that want just a very lean breakfast. You know, just simple fruit, simple oats, simple nuts, not much in the way of uh, a ton of sugar and uh, and just really straightforward. Still really tasty though. I honestly think maybe like blueberries and bananas with the sliced almonds and then do the honey instead of the agave nectar. I think that that would have maybe made me more of a fan of this. The actual oats that Starbucks use, the texture and the consistency just reminds me a lot more of instant oatmeal. Whereas the oats that Panera use kind of remind me of a better steel cut oat. I feel like Panera found a nice middle ground uh, as far as their oatmeal texture. Your guys' mileage may vary on how much texture you like your oatmeal to have. Just something to note that if you prefer oatmeal with a little bit more toothiness to it, that Starbucks might not be your uh, go-to. 
Last up, we have veggie breakfast sandwich option, right? So we have a wrap from Starbucks and then we have an actual sandwich from Panera. These are kind of similar. There's about as similar as I can get them to be. So there's spinach, egg whites, tomato, and feta in this one. And I believe it's a whole wheat wrap. And then this one, some sort of like a multi-grain sprouted bagel flat type deal. And it has avocado, tomato, spinach, and then egg whites and cheddar. Something, something along those lines. Anyway, let's see how they taste. I'm gonna start with Panera. This is really nice. You're getting a good flavor from the actual bread itself. There's some nice texture there because of the um, the sprouts or the oats. You're getting the creaminess because of the avocado, a little bit of that freshness from the tomato and the spinach, and then you're just getting kind of like that satisfying, you know, unctuousness from the egg white protein. This is really nice. Uh, I haven't really gotten much of the cheddar that's supposed to be in here, but everything else is a really well balanced bite. As far as this being like a good veggie option, there's really nothing bad I can say about this. If you're a veggie breakfast person and, and you like the idea of a breakfast sandwich, then I would imagine this is what you think of when you think of a good breakfast sandwich. The unctuousness and the overall balance of textures and flavors in this, it makes it a really, really good go-to breakfast option for um, vegetarian and meat eaters alike. Last up, we have the wrap from Starbucks. Let's see how this one stacks up. So the feta in there is really nice. It's like a herb feta and it brings just enough salt balance to kind of the earthier flavors that are going on in there with the, um, the spinach and the whole grain to make this a really nice well-rounded bite. On appearance alone, I thought that I was gonna like what Panera was doing more on this one, but like everything else that I've had, it does come down to a little bit of your mileage may vary because both of these companies are fairly similar in their approach. I would say that if you like the idea of maybe a fresher breakfast sandwich, um, something that leans a little bit more into like the, the natural flavor of the vegetables between you know the spinach and the, t the, the tomato and then the avocado, and you're definitely gonna like what Panera was doing. Me personally, I would have to probably nod, um, you know, in the direction of Starbucks on this. This is really nice. It's a well-balanced bite. I would say the only thing that might complement this a little bit more would be some sort of um, like a sauce or aioli or something like that, which I'm sure Starbucks probably has, and you could probably add on to this. Final review time. So I'm gonna make this you know, short and simple for you guys. If you're a more breakfasty kind of person, you like having big breakfast and just snacking throughout the rest of the day, breakfast is an important meal type of person, I would more readily go with the breakfast food options from Panera than I would at Starbucks. If you're just kind of a nine to fiver who wants something that's a little bit better than something maybe at like McDonald's or Dunkin', I would go with Starbucks. Uh, their coffee is just much better than Panera's and they still have some tasty options on their menu to accompany those coffees. Uh, also, we're gonna have a calorie count rundown for you guys as far as, you know, um, which one of these stack up against one another calorie wise, especially for you guys that are doing the resolution this year. And then also we're gonna have a, a, a cost for you guys as well. These were pretty negligible uh, in both cost and calories. They were relatively close, I would say, in the calorie department. It was maybe only you know, 500-ish calories difference. And I would say the reason why is because maybe the portions were a little bit, you know, bigger or smaller. And then the overall cost wasn't far off. I think Panera was a little bit more expensive at about $25. And then Starbucks, surprisingly to me, was a little bit cheaper at around $20. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button and please share this around. Also, if you're new to the channel, subscribe and turn those notifications on so you can stay up to date with what we have planned for future videos. Head on over to our Instagram so you guys can also check out the exclusive content that we produce strictly for our Instagram followers. That about wraps it up for us here at Fast Food Face Off. So remember, if you are what you eat, always eat amazing.